Good morning, students. In the previous class, we have discussed capacitance of parallel plate capacitor with dielectric slab introduced between them. Now, today, we will take the case instead of dielectric slab, we will replace it by conducting slab. So, if we are taking a parallel plate capacitor, first plate is positively charged, and the second plate. This is negatively charged, having charge plus Q and minus Q. Now, due to it, electric field generated is E0, external electric field with the help of these charges in use. Now, when a conducting slab of thickness T is introduced and the separation between the plates of capacitor is D and area, plate area is A. And now here, Capacitor, we have introduced a conducting plate, conducting slab in between these two plates of parallel plate capacitor. So, first point when no slab was introduced, what was the capacitance? This was C0 epsilon naught A upon D. This is the basic result we are familiar with. But when a conducting slab is introduced such that T is less than D, then in that case, as we know that within the conductor electric field will not exist electric field will never be there within the conductor so due to it now electric field is only in this particular reason that is within the reason d minus t so here this is a simple concept as compared to the previous case in dielectric slab here there was reduced field e was present e naught minus e p where in this case of conducting slab only electric field in this d minus t reason is present reason being because within a thickness of t electric field is not present so now the potential difference between the plates of capacitor this will be equal to electric field e naught within the reason d minus t while using the concept of potential gradient we have used the result now electric field is given by in between the plates carrying opposite charge this is sigma by epsilon naught this we have derived by gauss theorem so now sigma is q upon a so you can directly use this result here now v will be equal to q upon a epsilon naught into d minus t so now here we have to find capacitance. This will be Q upon V. So what we are getting? A epsilon naught upon D minus T. Now let me take D common. So it will be 1 minus T by T. So C can be written as C naught 1 minus T by D. So this is the expression of capacitance with a conducting slab in between. Now, here C will always be greater than C0. You can just check it by taking the values. And if T is equal to D, suppose the thickness of the slab, conducting slab, is equal to separation between the plates. So, C will be equal to, what will be there? C0 upon 1 minus T upon T. This is infinity. So now let me take one conceptual problem on the basis of concepts we have done. See here, if a capacitor is there. Now, when a dielectric slab is introduced between the plates of capacitor and initially the battery was connect, uh, connected to it, but now the battery is disconnected. It means when this plate capacitor, a parallel plate capacitor is connected to a battery initially and when dielectric slab is introduced and then battery is disconnected. Now, what will be the effect on charge, capacity, potential difference, electric field and energy? So, this is a very important kind of conceptual problem. Many a time such kind of question can be asked in one mark or two mark. As when the capacitor is connected to a battery, when it is connected to some external source. The purpose of source is to start charging the plates of capacitor. And when the plates are completely charged, after that, no further charge will be given to it. And then it means when it is connected to the battery, this charge attained by the plates of capacitor, it will remain same, it will remain 
constant it means it is charged let me charge if it is getting q charge and this plate is getting minus q charge so it means it is charged so charge will remains to be constant now when a dielectric slab is introduced so capacitance will be k times the original capacitance so when any time dielectric slab will be introduced capacitance will become k times the initial capacitance so it will increase capacitance will increase now what will be the effect on potential difference potential difference now to understand it as potential difference it is given by e into d by the concept of potential gradient see here when the dielectric slab is introduced the electric field be within the dielectric slab that will be reduced so e is the reduced field and it is related to dielectric constant by e not by k into d as we have explained earlier in the derivation also now we can take it as this e not into v that was the initial potential difference divided by k so what does it mean you can directly take potential difference will be equal to v not upon k so when k dielectric medium is introduced k is present so it means potential difference will decrease potential difference will decrease now next electric field as we know electric field is v upon d a separation between the plates is same but v potential difference decreases so electric field will also decrease and energy energy is q square by 2c or half c v square whatever you can take if you will use this as capacitance increase but voltage is decreased by square amount it will be dominating so if it is decreasing energy will decrease if you explain by this way as capacitance increases then energy will decrease so any of the method you can take as charge is remaining to be constant so u is inversely proportional to c here so c will increase as per this result but energy will decrease so either you explain it by this or this the result will remain to be the same so energy will decrease so this is one conceptual problem where after charging the plates of capacitor the battery was disconnected but there is some another problem that in that particular case when a battery is remaining connected to the capacitor when this is a capacitor and the battery is connected so certain particular potential is applied so what does it mean now what are the factors will remaining same or it will change charge capacitance potential electric field and energy now see here when it is connected to the same voltage so voltage will remain to be potential will remain to be constant now capacitance c will be given by k times c not so with the introduction of dielectric slab in between the plates of capacitor capacitance will increase so now what will be the effect on charge q equal to c into v v constant capacitance increase obviously the charge will also increase now effect on electric field see here as e is equal to v upon d as v is constant separation distance is also constant so it will remain to be constant it will remain to be constant and energy energy stored is q square by 2c or you can take it by half cv square better it will you will take it by this because here v is taken to be constant when v is constant c will increase so energy will increase or you can take by this q square by 2c c increase u should decrease but here it is q square dominating factor of the impact of the square factor so q increases q square will increase c increases according to as it in the denominator the result should be decreased so combined effect will be as the dominating part is of charge so energy will increase so these are the few points which i have discussed these are not actually the concepts these are the results although i have covered all the topics now today i am dealing here with the basic concepts that will be used in the numerical part or some important results 
Now next result what we are deriving here as when the dielectric slab is introduced in between the plates of parallel plate capacitor. Now what is the charge induced in di on dielectric slab? The charge induced on the dielectric slab. We have to find that. As we know that due to the charges present on parallel plate capacitor. So electric field in between the magnitude is given by sigma by epsilon naught. When dielectric slab is introduced, so electric field, electric field is developed inside the dielectric in the opposite direction, let it be EP or EI, anything you can take. This will be sigma P upon epsilon naught. So net field, electric field that will be reduced, this will be equal to E naught minus EP. Now Substituting the value sigma by epsilon naught by minus sigma p by epsilon naught. So E comes out to be 1 by epsilon naught sigma minus sigma p. And when you will uh, use the result sigma equal to charge per unit area. If Q is a charge here and uh, let QP is a charge produced on polarization or induced charge on the dielectric slab. So now let me take it as Q. A we are taking common Q minus QP. So this is electric field. Let it be 3. Now we also know that dielectric constant is given by electric field per unit reduced field. So what does it mean? E will be equal to E naught upon K. Now this is electric field. This is electric field. So from 3 and 4. as E naught upon K equal to 1 by epsilon naught A Q minus Q P. Again substituting the value of electric field sigma upon K again Q upon uh, Q upon K epsilon naught. One thing is missing here. I am just taking sigma upon epsilon naught. This. Yes. Electric field is sigma upon epsilon naught. This is multiplied by 1 by k. And when you are using yes, uh, surface charge density, then it is charge per unit area. Now it is equal to 1 by epsilon naught a q minus qp. So this common factor cancelled out. Here it is q by k equal to q minus qp. You have to find induced charge. So this is induced charge. qp will be equal to Q minus Q upon K. Taking Q common, this is 1 minus 1 by K. So, QP equal to Q 1 minus 1 by K. This is the result you can take directly. If you have to find charge induced on the dielectric, you have to calculate induced charge, you can find out by this result because Q is the charge on the any of the plate of capacitor, K is the dielectric constant. So instead of going to, through the long strips, you can directly use this result. Now numerical on the basis of the concept we have done, a slab of material of dielectric constant K has same area as that of plates of parallel plate capacitor but has thickness D by 2. Find the expression for capacitance when slab is inserted in plates of capacitor. See, this is parallel plate capacitor. This is having plus Q charge. This is having minus Q charge. And this is a dielectric slab of constant K has been introduced. And this thickness, this thickness is equal to D by 2. Figure is not required. I am just explaining it. Now, find the expression for the capacitance after an introduction of this dielectric slab. Now how to proceed? So basically you have to learn the results as we have done when the dielectric slab is introduced between the capacitance, uh, capacitor or when the conducting slab is introduced. You have to learn the, both the results. Here it is dielectric slab is introduced. So here the result is capacitance will be epsilon naught A upon D minus T plus T upon K. And thickness is given to be D by 2. So use T equal to D by 2. This is D minus D by 2 plus D by 2K. Further simplifying epsilon naught D minus D by 2 D by 2 plus D by 
2k further i can take d by 2 common see this is all mathematical step now here this is your you can just take its lcm or uh, initially this 2 i am taking in the numerator 2 epsilon not a upon d 1 plus 1 by k i will take its lcm k plus 1 so what you are getting 2 epsilon not a k upon d k plus 1 see all this is mathematical step this is epsilon naught a upon d this is initial capacitance without introduction of uh, dielectric slab so 2 c naught k upon k plus 1 right so this way what you have done you have simply learned this result so learn this result now substituting the values you are getting the answer so now on this basis i am giving you a homework exercise for you that if the thickness of dielectric slab is d uh, this is equal to 2d by 3 then find the capacitance this you will solve by the same method here t will be equal to 2d by 3 as we have done in the above formula we have substituted the same process you will do now next numerical here keeping voltage of charging source constant what would be percentage change in energy stored in parallel plate capacitor if D were decreased to 10%? So this is also an important kind of numerical. Every kind of numerical which I am covering here, these also are important numericals. So every different kind, kind I am covering here. Now see, as the voltage is kept to be constant, it is given as per the statement, you have to find percentage change in energy. If D were decreased to, it is decreased by 10% of D. Exactly it is not D dash, D is decreased by this amount. So basically whatever separation we are getting decreased from D, D minus 10% of D. It means D minus 10 upon 100 into D that will be equal to 90 upon 100 D or 0.9 D. Sometimes you get confused that it is decreased to 10%. So here when distance were decreased by 10% then you have to subtract. But if distance were decreased to 10% then only you will take 10% of D. This is a point which you have to be careful. So I have corrected in the statement because I am taking decreased by 10%. So now C dash, what will be the effective capacitance? Epsilon naught A upon D dash. As initial one was epsilon naught A upon D. Now substituting the value of D dash, epsilon naught A upon 0.9 into D. Then this epsilon naught A upon D, this is C naught upon 0.9. So it can be 10 upon 9 into C naught. Now, percentage change in energy. Percentage change in energy means del U upon U into 100. As energy, it is given by half C V square. So, if you will take change, let initial energy is U1 and final energy will be half C dash V square. So, U2 minus U1 will be half C dash minus C into V square. And per unit original one, so you will take half C naught. This is C naught we have taken as initial uh, capacitance V square. So, when you are taking, because this is percentage change, so it is del U upon U. So, here half will be cancelled, V square will be cancelled. What we are getting? C dash upon C naught minus 1. Now, use this result here. So, percentage change will be C dash upon C naught minus 1 into 100. C dash upon C, as we have obtained C here, C dash is 10 by 9 C naught. So, from here, C dash upon C naught is 10 by 9. Use here 10 by 9 minus 1 into 100. This is your 10 LCM you will take. This is 1 by 9 into 100. You know when you will solve it. This is 11.1 percentage. 
see this cushion seems to be slight twisted but it is not as difficult you can just realize it that voltage is remaining to be same when uh, uh, when the separation between the plates of capacitor were changed so initial capacitance was that was epsilon naught a upon d condition is when the distance were decreased so distance is changed as separation were decreased by this much 10 percent so that's why we have taken the difference now just substitute the value of d dash further c dash upon c naught we are getting so to get percentage change in energy that means change in energy per unit or is the energy multiplied by 100 so coming to energy initial energy is half c v square final energy will be uh, you can rather take it as half c naught v square because initial capacitance we have represented by c naught Final energy will be half C dash V square. So taking their difference, dividing by the original energy, substituting the values, you are getting the percentage change in energy. Now we are taking another numerical. Show that the force on each plate of parallel plate capacitor has a magnitude equal to half QE. Where Q is the charge on capacitor plate and E is the electric field between the plates. Now I also explain the origin of the significance of half coming in the result. So here first of all we have to understand that when we are taking the plates of capacitor so we have to find expression of force acting on each plate of the capacitor. So for it how to proceed so now in a parallel plate capacitor each plate is having area A and we have to calculate force acting on each plate. Let we say that if whatever be the separation between the plates if we say let dx is the more separation required. If we say that the small work done in increasing the separation that is dx separation has to be increased between the plates of capacitor this will be equal to force multiplied by displacement that is dx separation change now when this force is when this work has to be done increasing the separation between the plates the separation distance has to be increased what will happen there will be some increase in volume if a is the plate area and increase in separation is dx so this will be the increase in volume now how to proceed we know that energy density energy density is energy per unit volume so what will be energy here if we represent energy density by u this is symbolic representation so u into v where this e refer to increase in energy so u is the energy density and v will be equal to increase in volume Now, what we have to do here that we are finding this increase in energy. Now, energy density is half epsilon naught E square into increase in volume is A into dx. Now, the step will be quite easy for you because here we have to understand the starting point where do we have to proceed. So, now half epsilon naught E, let me take it together, then E into A into dx. So here, this, we know electric field between the plates of capacitor is sigma upon epsilon naught. So, sigma will be equal to, that is surface charge density will be epsilon naught into E. So here we will substitute this value. So, increase in energy will be given by, this will be equal to sigma into A into E into dx. Now sigma into A again it is equal to charge by the result that sigma equal to charge per unit area. So let me take it as Q into E into dx. So we must take this initial work done to be 0.1. So basically first we have taken the amount of work in increasing the separation between the plates and corresponding to that we have also obtained increase in energy when there is a separation is increasing so now both on the left hand side we have in the first equation you can see that was the work done that is a form of energy in the second we are calculating increase in energy so 
we are equating equation first and second so when we equate these two equation then we will get f dx equal to half q e dx so dx will be cancelled what we are left f equal to half q e so this is asked in the question that the force acting on each plate of the capacitor that comes out to be half q charge and e electric field between the plates of capacitor now another point that has been asked what is the origin of this half so see here half factor signifies that electric field between the plates is e and outside the plates is zero basically here as both are carrying the same charge q and minus q so in between this electric field is basically e so if we are calculating electric field this here it will be zero so we have two values of electric field one in between another outside so if we take mean of these two values so it will be e by 2 q is a charge on each plate so instead of e we have taken electric field as half e why because outside the plates electric field is 0 and in between the plates electric field is e so 0 plus e by 2 we are taking the mean value of electric field so this is the significance of factor half by how there you can say this half factor has been introduced so here basic concept that before doing this you must understand the formula of you must learn the formula of energy density because that formula we have substituted here directly now as we have completed all the concepts on capacitor so let me take one more numerical on capacitor this is important and in board exam it has been asked this figure shows here this figure has been shown here this figure has been given let me uh, read the statement first figure shows two identical capacitors c1 and c2 equal to one microfarad two capacitors that are given to be equal connected to a battery of 6 volt initially switch s is closed switch is given here initially that switch was closed and after some time switch s is left open and then a dielectric slab of dielectric constant 3 is inserted to fill completely space between the plates that means in the initial capacitors two dielectric medium has been introduced having dielectric constant 3 how will charge and potential be affected after slabs are inserted so you have to find what will be the effect on charge and potential when these slabs dielectric slabs having certain dielectric constant is inserted now as per the statement and the figure is given here see here two capacitors are connected c1 c2 of same capacitance value and this is a switch s that is initially it was closed and this is a battery of 6 volt so voltage is given to be 6 volt and both the capacitor having equal capacitance 1 microfarad initially when the switch is closed so when the switch is closed as the value of potential and capacitance is same so q equal to cv c is same voltage is same why because both the capacitors are connected in parallel so potential difference will be same so the charge across first or second capacitor it will be equal to capacitance of each that is same value 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 farad into potential voltages 6 so it will come out to be 6 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb or 6 micro coulomb you can take so each of the charge initial value of charge is 6 micro coulomb this was the case when initially no dielectric was introduced and the switch was closed now the second point when the switch is open when it is open see as per the figure when this is open now the charge is flowing to this whatever change will be there in this here it charge across this will remain to be the same so first of all let me take the capacitance c1 and c2 dash as when dielectric slab is introduced so capacitance will become three times the initial value it means three microfarad in both the cases because same dielectric has been introduced so it means directly whether the battery is connected or disconnected capacitance will automatically increase why because dielectric constant is multiplied with the initial capacitance 
Now, what you have to discuss here, what is the effect on charge and potential when dielectric is introduced and the switch is open. See here, charge on first capacitor C1, that is C1 dash when it becomes. So, potential charge will become C1 dash into V1. Now, C1 dash is 3 micro farad and potential is same because again it is connected in the parallel. No change in the battery. So, it is 3 into 6 that will be 18 micro coulomb. Right? But when the switch is open, in that particular case, no continuously battery is supplied here. In that particular case, charge will remain to be the same before when the switch was closed. So, in that case, charge across second capacitor will remain to be the same because now the battery has been disconnected from it as the switch is open. So, by this way, we have calculated the charge. You can see across C2, charge will not change, but the capacitance is rising, whereas for C1, charge and capacitance both are increasing. Now, let we have to study the impact on potentials as Initial also and finally also when the switch is open and closed potential it will be same but potential drop across second capacitor C2 will be Q2 dash as charge is 6 micro coulomb and capacitance capacitance will be because dielectric is introduced so that's why we will take it as C2 dash and that C2 dash was we have calculated 3 microfarad so now you solve it this is Word. So, this is the difference you can see here when the capacitor were connected in parallel initially the switch S this switch S was closed so in that case potential across this C1 and C2 is same and charge will also be same reason being being connected in parallel it doesn't mean that the these are connected in parallel charge will be same. Here potential is same and capacitor is capacitance is same. So that's why Q equal to CV it will lead to same charge. Now when the switch is opened, switch is opened in that case first of all as the dielectric is directly introduced. So capacitance of each of the capacitor will rise. It will become 3 microfarad. Now let me calculate charge. Charge across C1 and C2. Now across C1 it will be given by C1 dash into v1 that is 3 microfarad into 6 18 micro coulomb but for c2 because the switch is open now charge will remain to be the same and potential across first capacitance it will remain to be the same but potential across second will change because the charge and capacitance both are changed so it will come out to be 2 volt now now next we are taking and um, taking this last numerical this is of ncrt exercise this is important case this concept in the form of numerical has been asked otherwise this is this is a derivation part also but we will take in terms of numerical actually van de graaff generator was one topic few years back and then now uh, since three four years that has been excluded and its working principle is this numerical so directly we are not taking this as a topic but in the form of numerical I am explaining it's very very important many many numericals will be solved on this basis. So see the statement first a small sphere of radius R1 charge Q1 is enclosed by a spherical shell of radius R2 and charge Q2. Here see this is a small sphere radius R1 charge Q1 is distributed all over it. Now, it is enclosed inside this spherical shell of radius R2 carrying charge Q2. Now, what you have to prove here, show that if Q1 is positive, this charge Q1 is positive, charge will necessarily flow from sphere to the shell. Q1 is positive, it will flow from inner sphere to the outer shell. When the two are connected, when two are connected by a wire, when some connection has been made in between, no matter what the charge Q on the outer shell is. What is the magnitude of Q2? We, here we have to prove the charge will always flow from inner sphere to outer shell. As Q1 is positive and what can be, whatever can be the magnitude of Q2. What is the charge on Q2? So let me see how to do. 
now see here as per this now when the charge q1 is present on the sphere and q2 is present on the shell at a distance r2 from the common center now potential inside shell which shell which having radius r2 so this potential potential having the formula k q by r so k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and charge over the shell is q2 and the distance from the center is r2 so potential inside the shell of radius r2 will be this one due to the charge present on its surface now let me introduce sphere of radius r1 inside the shell by any mod we are not uh, going to discuss by what mod we are making it to just enter it we are saying that by any mod we are making this sphere to be placed inside it carrying charge q1 so now due to this charge present over this sphere what is the contribution of this charge to potential on the smaller sphere as well as on the shell outer shell so it is equal to first of all the charge is situated at the distance r1 from the center at the surface of this sphere so it will be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 upon r1 at surface of small sphere this is at the surface of small sphere. Why? Because this charge is distributed only on the surface. But this charge will contribute to the potential for the outer shell also. So what is that contribution? This will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 where we are measuring it at large distance on the surface of the shell. Just at this point you have to be very careful about it as this charge is situated at this point but we have to calculate potential at a distance r2 so this charge will contribute here as q1 at a distance r2 and this is at the surface of large shell so basically whatever charge is present on the inner sphere it will have contribution for the inner sphere as well as for the outer shell but charge present on the outer shell will not have contribution to the inner sphere if you remember in one of my video i have taken such kind of one numerical where i have explained by taking different cases when the inner charge will contribute to the inner surface as well as outer surface for the potentials but outer charge will not contribute to the inner radii factor so see now potential on the surface of radius r2 this will be equal to for this charge present on the outer surface will contribute that is 4 pi epsilon naught r2 q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r and the charge on the outer surface is q2 and the distance is r2 whereas contribution due to this point due to charge q1 this is q1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught r2 you can see here distance has to be taken to be same now potential on the inner surface as c q1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught r1 this is the, this expression first expression we have taken that is this charge is contributed uh, to the potential at a distance r1 plus now as the charge whichever whatever charge q2 is present that is contributed only on the outer radii not on the inner radii this is a main point which you have to understand if you understand this step then in the next step you will simply get the result you have to learn the result or you have to see how to apply the result how to get this result for sphere for the shell of radii r2 both the charges will contribute at the same distance r2 but for a sphere of radius r1 inner charge will contribute to the smaller radius whereas outer charge will contribute only at the outer surface so now let me take the difference of second and one this is only difference not the reason so it is vr1 
minus V R2. Now when we are taking the difference, what factor you are removing? What will be cancelled? You see here, Q1 upon this, Q2, which factor is common? If you will just take the difference, this is Q1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught R1 plus Q2 upon 4 pi epsilon naught R2 minus Q2 upon 4 pi epsilon naught R2 minus Q1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught R2. So this factor will cancel out. What is left? Q1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. This is 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. So it means V R1 minus V R2 comes out to be this result. Now in the statement it was given no matter what the charge on Q2 shell is. Whatever will be the charge on Q2 was present it was simply cancelling out. It was not contributed to the final result. So that's why it was said. Now here we know that R1 is less than R2. When R1 is less than R2, so 1 by R1 will be greater than 1 by R2. You can check it how. If 2 is less than 4 or 3, whatever, when by 1 by 2 will be greater than 1 by 4. You can check. 1 by 2 is 0.5 and uh, this is 0.5 and this is 0.25. So this is the mathematical step. You must be knowing this. So now from this, let me put the value in equation. 3. So from here you can see that as 1 by R1 is greater than 1 by R2, what we conclude that Vr1 minus Vr2 it must be or from here you can take 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2 is greater than 0 guess you can say. So when you are saying like this so the difference will also be greater than 0. What does it mean? Vr1 is greater than Vr2. It means potential of inner sphere is greater than outer shell potential of inner sphere is more than that of outer shell so charge always flows from lower potential surface to higher or higher potential surface to lower it always moves from higher potential surface to lower surface so it means when we are saying this is carrying q1 charge this is carrying q2 charge so this surface potential is greater because having radius r1 and this potential is greater as compared to outer one so when these were connected by certain wire so charge will flow from inner to outer so that's why uh, that's why it was asked in the question that the charge will flow from inner sphere to outer shell when connected by a wire. So this is the final result. I am just taking it once again because it's an important and typical kind of numerical. See here coming to the first page again. Here as per the statement I am taking that the two sphere uh, one sh uh, shell and the sphere these are connected together by a wire and it has to be proved that the ch uh, charge will flow from inner surface to outer initially it seems to be incorrect reason being because this is the lesser surface but this is a surface of lesser radii but we know that potential is inversely proportional to r smaller is the distance more will be the potential initially you can just pick uh, keep this point in your mind this surface having smaller radii so smaller radii means it will have more potential but now to prove it let we are taking mathematical step we will take the contribution of charge to potential so for this outer surface this charge is q2 so potential due to this charge on the dis on particular this distance will be q 4 pi by 4 pi epsilon naught r2 whether it is for outer shell or for inner shell it will contribute only for the radius distance r2 but this inner charge it will contribute for both the distances r1 and r2 so here 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 r1 for inner surface and 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r2 for the outer surface that is shell. Now potential on the outer shell that this is q2 upon 4 pi epsilon naught r2 as in the first step we have taken plus this particular point q1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught r2. Now again potential on the inner surface this will be the charge on the inner surface this charge 
plus outer charge contribution to the potential at a distance r2. Now this is the main step. Now you have subtracted these two equations. What we are getting that q2 factor will not contribute. Whatever be the magnitude of the charge on outer surface, maybe more, maybe less, it will not make any difference. It will be cancelled out. And finally we come to know that potential of inner shell surface will be more as compared to outer shell. That's why when these are connected by a wire, then the charge will always flow from high, uh, inner surface to outer till their potential become equal. So students, this is all which I have to cover in unit electrostatic. Yes, it's a lengthy unit. It's take a lot of time. Almost one month it has taken and it may be more than that. But uh, I want now you people to revise it word to word carefully because I have covered each and every aspect of numerical and conceptual problems. Now, you have to first of all not go to any different books. Just take the notes if you have noted all the points which I have given you. Revise it. Give it a written practice. When you are confident enough that I have done all the points which is given in the form of notes to you, then open one book. Reference book. In that reference book, you will go through some extra problems that will be in the form of solved numericals and conceptual problems. Initially solved numericals and conceptual problems. When you will do all that, then go to the unsolved problem. Meanwhile, simultaneously you will start reading the chapter from your NCRT book if you have. If you don't have, don't worry. I am saying to read NCRT book, reason being because now Everything is written in NCRT in brief. Now you are able to understand word to word meaning of NCRT. And each word is very, very elaborative in NCRT. Now you can understand each thing very clearly. So I have covered all the things and if you have any doubt, you can ask me. You can contact me anytime. So now prepare for the complete unit so that you can appear for the test. So thank you. Have a nice day.